Last week on our program, when we talked about different oak trees, the pin oak was one that we featured. Now, the pin oak is an attractive tree. What I like about it is the sort of horizontal and then drooping shape that the branches give you as you look at the tree. You see that the lower branches grow all the way to the ground and they continue to want to do that even if you limb them up a ways the uh, the other branches above that will sort of droop down to the ground the pin oak is one of the red oaks that has a good deal of fall color we usually get some nice fall color from the pin oaks and they get their name not because of the shape of the leaves or the little bristles on the edge of the leaves but because they have numerous little twigs that sort of look like pins maybe old-fashioned wooden pins or something like that the pin oak trees do have a problem when grown in soils with a high pH or an alkaline soil like we have a lot in central and western Oklahoma so there probably wouldn't be a good choice for those areas unless you do like what was done to this planting area years ago we created a soil in this spot specifically for pin oak trees before the trees were planted large amounts of elemental sulfur were added to the soil and tilled in and as you can see the pin oaks in these groves out here south of our Oklahoma gardening studio are really healthy they're dark green that acidic soil that was created before they were planted has been very beneficial to these trees now you can treat a chlorotic or yellow pin oak by applying some chelated iron in a drench around the tree's roots We're here inside one of the groves of pin oaks here south of our studio garden. And you can see it looks like a little forest habitat or a little forest-like microclimate. We've got a good litter of leaves on the ground, even in the middle of the summer here. And it almost looks like we're out in the woods. Now I know everyone is not able to have a little portion of a woods or forested area on their property but what you can gain from this idea is that you don't have to have turf underneath your trees you could do an area that is mulched or even plant them with ground covers now it may look like some of these trees aren't doing so well because of some of these dead limbs but this is natural in a forested area where there's not much light it's natural for the tree to drop its limbs or to let its limbs die that are down below the canopy area where they're not getting any, getting any light. Now up above this canopy area you can see the leaves are dark green, the limbs are really healthy, and the trees are really in good shape. So again, maybe you don't have to have turf around your trees. Mulch the area or plant it in ground covers. Well, if you think growing a pin oak may be too much trouble, if you don't want to create an acidic soil or worry about chelated iron applications, you could do something else and plant a schumert oak like we've got right here. The schumert oak is a tree that we recommend planting instead of a pin oak in areas of central and western Oklahoma where the soils are more alkaline. You can plant a schumert oak there and they don't turn yellow. They don't get chlorotic. Schumert oaks are native to Oklahoma. They're native to much of the state, even all the way out into parts of western Oklahoma. So it is a really good tree for Oklahoma. In fact, it was our Oklahoma proven tree back in 2001. Now you can tell the Schumert oak by looking at the leaves. And we learned this in class here at OSU that you look for the thumb shaped or thumb sized sinuses. Looks like some thumb prints here, these open areas of the leaf. These are the sinuses, these are the lobes, but thumb shaped or thumb sized sinuses here present in the Schumert oak. One of the tallest trees in Oklahoma is a Schumert oak in Canadian County. That tree is over 120 feet tall. You may be surprised to know that of the some 600 species of oak around the world, there are several which are evergreen. Now here in Oklahoma, we can grow an evergreen oak. We can grow the live oak like we've got behind me here. These are majestic trees that are usually wider than they are tall. Now you may remember a few weeks ago on our program, 
We were down in southwestern Oklahoma and we showed you some of the native quartz mountain live oaks. Now these are special oaks that are the variety Fusiformis and they are much better adapted to growing in Oklahoma than maybe some of the live oaks that are brought in from some of the eastern states. Now I've had some horticulturists in my time speculate that the reason some of these other live oak trees don't do so well is because of the crystallization of ice beneath the bark. Now you can see some old wounds on this tree, a very large wound that happened years ago and uh, that could be one of the reasons that uh, that injury is there. But if I were going to plant a live oak in Oklahoma, I think I would definitely choose one from the Quartz Mountains. The live oak is the state tree of Georgia. Another oak we talked about last week is the water oak, and we've got one right here. The water oaks are oaks that are native to the eastern part of the United States. Their natural range does make it in to Oklahoma, so we see these over in the eastern part of the state. They're a lowland species. That means we'll see the water oaks in floodplains or bottomlands, areas like that. Not much up on hilly areas or ridges or things like that. The water oak is a red oak, and if you use your imagination, you can see how the plant's leaves get their name. This is known as a spatulate leaf, so it's uh, roughly the shape of a spatula. But on the water oaks, their leaves are highly variable. I mean, you can see some of these back here that actually have a few lobes. So you have to really look at a lot of different leaves before you make the designation of which type of oak this is. Now you can see a single awn or bristle up at the tip of the leaf designating it as a red oak. The water oaks will sometimes suffer iron chlorosis if they are planted in an alkaline soil just like the pin oaks and the willow oaks. But a great tree for the eastern part of our state. A new concern when it comes to our oaks is a recent disease that has been discovered out in California and parts of Oregon. It's known as sudden oak death and it's a fungal organism that has caused the death of several thousands of trees in California and parts of southwestern Oregon. The disease Sudden oak death attacks the western species of oak, but it will also affect some of the eastern species if they are exposed. It also shows up on other species of plants. Now here in Oklahoma, we haven't had sudden oak death on any of our oak trees, but it has shown up on a few other landscape species. So if you're going to be making a trip out to California or Oregon, please don't remove any plant material to bring back here. And if you buy any landscape material, make sure it's certified clear or clean of sudden oak death. Now, plants that are highly susceptible other than oaks are azaleas, rhododendrons, camellias, and viburnums. So we want to make sure we protect our oak trees here in Oklahoma. If you want to learn more about sudden oak death, you can go to the website www.suddenoakdeath.org.